Hi, and welcome back to our podcast. Today we are exploring the world of newborn sleep, and we're going to cover a whole range of topics in there. But first, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Nikki, and Amanda is here with me. Hi. And we're the founders of Little Ones, a company really passionate about helping your little ones and you sleep a whole lot better. We are total sleep geeks over here, and we'd love to share it all with you guys. So check out our website, www.littleones.co, or find us on the App Store. All right, newborn sleep. Let's dive right in and break it down, shall we, Amanda? Because this is a big topic. Yeah, for sure. And it's often really a bit of a minefield, really, because especially with our first, there's such like a, I don't know, what's the, what's the word? There's such a, I don't know, an unknown as yeah, such. I they're think. a mystery. And they're a mystery. And yeah, the, everybody needs to learn what's going on, I think, especially parents. And the thing I always say when you have your first child is you actually just don't know because what it's going to be like, because you have no context for it. There is no way you can even explain to a new parent what it's going to be like and they'll understand because they have no frame of reference. It's just so unlike anything you will have ever done before. So, yeah. And then, of course, sleep is a huge part of your newborn baby's life because, you know, if your baby is brand spanking new, they're going to be sleeping something ridiculous like 17 hours of the day. That's quite similar yeah. to cats. What a cat sleep 20 hours of the day or something like that. Well, my cat definitely does. But, you know, like they spend, newborn babies spend so much of their time sleeping. I yeah. don't know why everybody's not talking about newborn sleep. I don't know why the midwives and the hospitals aren't talking so much about it. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of emphasis on the actual birth and how you give birth and, and what will happen during birth. But that's just the beginning. That is literally just the beginning. I think the biggest yeah. pain point in all parents in those first few years is going to be sleep. And I feel mm -hmm. like there's hardly any emphasis around those first few days, those first few weeks on how you're going to get your baby to go to sleep. And yeah, so. So today let's look at why sleep is so important for your newborn baby. Then we can look at how much sleep your newborn should be having because it is such an ever-changing beast. How long can your newborn be awake for? How do you get your newborn to sleep in the first place? We're going to look at what if your newborn isn't settling or sleeping. Definitely what you can expect for night sleep because, of course, when we talk about sleep, we're talking about daytime sleep and night sleep, although the night sleep's always the most painful. Um, yeah, definitely. So let's, let's start by looking at why sleep is so important for your newborn baby. I think the... Sleep is just so important, as I said before, about the actual birth that is the beginning. We need to also recover from birth. So we're going to need to have our baby sleeping so that we can rest, recover. You know, some people would have ended up having C-sections and so they're not going to be able to do much in those first few weeks. So there is a lot of time there just to recover. And your baby also needs to recover from the birth too. You know, birth is a, pretty, is a pretty big traumatic event for babies and it's certainly very exhausting for them. So they also need to have that time and it doesn't happen in a day that, you know, they need some time to recover from the birth as well. The, the big thing about sleep, especially in the newborn stage, and I don't think people quite realize this or give it enough emphasis, is this first three months, because realistically that's what we're talking about, right, for newborn, is it the first few months? Yeah is the the only period in your child's whole life where they are developing as fast as they are in such a short time frame. So never in their life are they going to develop this fast in this shorter time frame. The growing and the development that's physical and cognitive development is so massive in those this is why they sleep for 17 15 16 17 hours a day because they need the sleep um, for yeah, all that often, growing. Often referred to as like that fourth trimester, which is mm -hmm. when they are still growing and when they do need that, um, yeah, the sleep to help them out to get through that fourth trimester. Right. And um, then eventually we do end up with a lot more alert and awake babies. But 
we definitely, I think the next point here is we need to make sure that they aren't getting overtired and overstimulated because that is going to be the worst thing for everybody in the whole family mm-hmm. if you've got a newborn that's overtired and overstimulated. In those first few weeks, I think the majority of advice out there is that they can stay awake for a little over an hour. This does really depend, though, on if your baby was actually born at full term. You know, if your baby was actually five, seven weeks early, that is it, potentially that time frame is actually even less. So, and or, if they were two weeks late, yeah, yeah, if they were two weeks late, then mm. they're actually already a two week old sort of baby when it comes to sleep. So, they might be able to stay awake for a little over an hour. Mm. So, it's really. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll talk yeah. about awake times a bit a bit further on, but what you're saying is it's so just you've got to stop them from being overtired at, at any and all costs. I mean, the other reason that, like we were talking about with all the growth and development, why sleep is so important for your newborn is because we know, because the science these days tells us that when we are sleeping, anybody, you, me, our babies are sleeping, there's all of this incredible stuff that's happening in our body. Our immune system is being strengthened and repaired we're obviously having a lot of physical growth that's the obvious one because that's the one we see but there's all that Mm. stuff going on in their brain there especially in a new baby their neurons are firing and connecting and their brains are literally exploding with all of the stuff they're learning in their awake periods that learning is consolidating so sleep is super important for all of that stuff that needs to be happening while they're sleeping and quite simply if your newborn's not sleeping well they are missing out on on all of these benefits. Yeah, for sure. And good sleep also means really good feeding too. Yeah. And that is also so important with a newborn baby that they are feeding well. Whether they've you know, whether they've learnt to feed well yet or maybe you're having issues with milk or they're having issues with feeding, you know, it never goes well with any of those things if you've already got an overtired or Mm -hmm. a tired baby to start with because they will not feed well no matter Mm -hmm. what and so that good sleep is super important because maybe they're just not feeding well and getting a full feed because they're actually just so tired yeah that's right so that is super important and there is a lot of emphasis on feeding and rightly so in the first few months but but we need to understand that there is a massive symbiotic relationship there between feeding and sleeping. And sometimes yeah. the reason a baby might not be feeding well is because they are not sleeping well. But then, of course, they're not yeah. sleeping well because they're hungry. So we'll look at some of those issues a bit later on. So then if we move on, Amanda, to how much sleep. And this is something that I was so unbelievably clueless about with my eldest child. How much sleep should our newborn babies be having? Because the thing is, the, th- the big thing actually is that your newborn's not just going to fall asleep when they're tired. They might if you have some kind of miracle baby. Uh, they, <laughs> well, maybe probably, that... they probably they... won't. <laughs> they're no, not... maybe, maybe that happens just for the first uh, few days, days or the first yeah. – well, that depends again if they're feeding well. But after feeding's all sorted, you know, maybe that happens for the first few weeks and they're a bit tired. But most babies are pretty alert after a couple of days and – yeah, they they will need oh, to. My eldest, I'd... when she was newborn, we had we struggled to keep her awake to feed yeah. for the first few days. We had to really try to keep her awake. The irony is, after a few days, when she kind of woke up, she it was then impossible to get to sleep because I <laughs> I was going, oh, she's just going to fall asleep when she's tired. Don't newborn babies just sleep? Everyone says, oh, no. they'll just eat and sleep. Nope, not mine. <laughs> No, so so if how, we much, look at, how much sleep yeah, should they be having? If we look at any day, as we know, humans of all age, whether they're a newborn baby or a 25-year-old, we all humans need the same amount of sleep, roughly, for their age group as everybody else. So if we look at a 24-hour period and we keep sort of 12 of those hours for a baby overnight, then we've got to break up the rest during the day. So We, we should just say that when we mean overnight, that's including night feeds. and yeah. We're not saying 12 yeah. hours at a newborn stage of solid sleep overnight. We break the no. night into a 12-hour sleep chunk. Yeah, that's right. So they will be waking up for little feeds overnight, but mm-hmm. that is 
pretty much wake, feed straight back to sleep. So between the zero and three weeks, we would expect that a, a full-term baby of, of a age-corrected baby would be sleeping around five and a half hours during the day. And that needs to be broken up, as we've already said, into naps and making sure those naps aren't too spaced out and making sure that the baby isn't getting overtired in between the naps. Then between three and five weeks, we would be expecting around five hours, five and a quarter hours in the day. And then if we extrapolate that further on, then it just basically gets slightly less and less. Five to seven weeks, around four and three quarter hours during the day. Seven to nine weeks, around four and a half hours during the day. And nine to 12 weeks, around four hours in the day. And I think that that is probably a huge trap that Mm. a lot of first time parents, I know I fell into this trap of thinking that my newborn baby is technically a newborn right up to 12 weeks old, yeah. that they still need to sleep those, you know, five and a half to six hours that mm-hmm. they were doing in those first three weeks right through to 12 weeks, which I've seen books and, and programs and things that do recommend this. But I think that you can end up in that trap where you're trying to put your baby down when they actually don't need to be asleep in those last few weeks of being a newborn. Yeah, so I 100% agree with you. People just don't understand that the sleep needs in this period are changing so rapidly. Like as you've just heard Amanda explain, every couple of weeks they need slightly less and less sleep. And that is because they need more and more awake time. Yeah. And they need that awake time growing. to be learning and developing and interacting. And then they need it so that they're tired enough to actually sleep well when they do sleep. You cannot just sort of have the same sleep pattern or expectations for a two-week-old baby that you have for a 12-week-old baby because they are dramatically different. Like there's like an hour and a half difference in their sleep needs between two weeks old and 12 weeks old. So yeah, you have to stay on top of that. And the flip side of the how much they need to sleep is how long should they be awake? Maybe, Nikki, you run through this one. Yeah, this is definitely the other important part of the equation. And this is a way for yourselves to figure out a bit of a routine for your baby so you can take their overall daytime nap hours and their awake periods that they can be awake for between naps and sort of put it all together into a routine or we've actually done it for you. (laughs) It's available (laughs) inside our app. So awake times are really important to get right because it reduces your little one's chances of getting overtired. It means they're easier to settle to sleep when it's time for a nap and they will definitely nap better and sleep better overnight if their awake time is right for their age. And I think also this helps too with consolidating their nighttime sleep in those ages when your baby is a little bit more malleable and hasn't got any sort of habits of waking up overnight where if you've got the daytime spot on the night will fall into place quite Mm -hmm. easily at these ages so it's really is sort of underrated as Mm. to how important it can be to get those newborn awake times right it's like a secret weapon yeah so we, we also need to some people don't quite understand what constitutes an awake time either often I talk to people who don't count the feeding part as the awake time or is it from when you take your baby out of the bed or is it when you put them back in whether they're awake or asleep awake time needs to be counted from the second your baby's eyes ping open to the second they are closed again for sleep and that includes feeds so if you're getting your baby up then feeding them also on the other end of the awake time it includes that time that they're actually being settled to sleep I think because that time can take 15 minutes in a newborn to actually get them to go to sleep sometimes so yeah just being aware that it's going to take that long so they Mm. need to be calmed and settled and maybe and put into their uh, crib or bassinet you know 15 minutes before you want them to be asleep Mm -hmm. so it does definitely feel in those first few weeks that all you do is get your baby up feed them burp them rock them back to sleep but that is basically all they can handle you know when their awake time is only an hour and a half that's basically all you're going to fit in there so let's look at what these awake times are because between zero and five weeks your little one cannot be awake for more than an hour and a half 
at a time. And there is a caveat there, and that is that in their very last awake time of the day, so between their last nap and then when you want them to go to bed for the night, that should be two hours because that gives them a little bit of extra awake time. It gives you time to get everything in, their bath, their bedtime routine before you put them down for the night. And then as with the nap hours decreasing, as they get older, the awake times increase. So then five to seven weeks, you're looking at an awake time of an hour 40. Seven to nine weeks, it's getting closer to that two hour mark. And then from nine to 12 weeks, you're realistically looking at an awake time of two hours to two hours 10, two hours 15. So again, as with the nap hours, that is dramatically increasing across that 12 week period. And you have to keep on top of that awake time development because otherwise if your baby hasn't been awake for long enough they're going to resist going to sleep they're going to nap for shorter periods because they're not tired enough to sleep for longer and it is going to start negatively impacting their nighttime sleep and if their awake times are too long during the day it can also cause what's called the witching hour which generally <laughs> uh, so many people just think this is a thing that and it's babies normal. have and that it's normal it's usually pretty easy to correct and actually not have a witching hour mm. and I know that my children only ever had it on particular days when I had kept them up, up too long or something had happened or they'd been sick or whatever so that witching hour can happen if your baby is overtired at the end of the day whether this is due to the the baby not having enough sleep during the day in total or whether there has been a period of awake time that was too long that they couldn't handle so yeah if you're getting that witching hour have a look at their naps and I can almost nine times out of ten can be corrected by checking their naps and making sure they're not awake too long in between. Yeah, so a witching hour would look like your baby being very unsettled in the evening, screaming, crying, won't feed properly, is maybe feeding on and off, is very difficult to settle to sleep. So if that sounds like your baby, then definitely Mm. take a look at what's happening in their daytime because that's, yeah, like Amanda said, pretty much always caused by overtiredness. So then if we know how much sleep, our babies should be having and how much awake time are we actually getting these babies to sleep Amanda yeah so I guess this part is actually generally covered in some of those antenatal courses and things so hopefully you've got a few things already in place like you've got a swaddle hopefully or some sort of um a little sleep suit that you know the zipped up swaddles there's so many good fitted swaddles out there um if not Go and get one. Mm. There is definitely a myth around where people think that their babies hate swaddles. And like nine, again, nine times out of 10, or even I'd say almost 10 times out of 10. I would say 11 times out of 10. (laughs) It's not that they hate uh, swaddling. It's just that they're resisting sleep or they're already overtired Mm. or they know, you know, you've got to think they've been wrapped up in, in a tight cocoon for nine months in your stomach. So they love that feeling of being tightly wound. Their arms aren't flailing around, waking them up and, Honestly, a swaddle is just one of the first things that should be implemented. The next thing would be making sure their ba- the baby is really full and they have a full tummy and that they are really well winded or burped. Yes. Um, this is such a tricky one. And I know one of my children, I it could take my husband and I up to an hour and a half to wind her properly because she just took in so much air. Um, while she was feeding it was never a good experience trying to feed her but making sure that they are winded generally with a baby who will burp and feed well you can just wind them halfway through a feed straight after the feed and then again another trick is to do it just before they're going to sleep or just before you change their uh, nappy or diaper and put them into bed try and get another burp out Mm -hmm. so that's a general rule of thumb for babies who feed and wind well. So after they've got a full tummy, really well winded, they're in a swaddle, the next thing that is super important is making sure you have a really dark room. Yes. I know that at 
in those first few weeks that may seem like the babies don't need to sleep in a dark room, but I can guarantee that it's a great non-parent controlled sleep association that will just flow right on when they do start going through that three, four month sleep regression that is just super easy to continue on. I can tell you right now, if I go and have a nap during the day, my curtains are shut, they're not wide open. So it's just human nature to sleep in a dark room. Do you get a chance to nap during the day? No, no. <laughs> I had a nap the other day for the first time in years. I wondered what oh. was wrong with me. <laughs> Were you sick? Well, I started to think I might have been. Maybe. <laughs> the next really super easy thing to do in that room environment is to put on white noise. And yes. we would always recommend in a newborn baby to use our sleep shh sound called baby sleep shh. You can find it on any of the streaming platforms out there. Put it on repeat. It's a 45 minute track, but mm -hmm. put it on repeat and have it going for the entire time your baby is sleeping. It mimics the same sound that they were getting inside the womb, but also the most importantly, it induces a calming reflex and calming when a baby is trying to go to sleep is the best thing possible. Yeah. It is honestly magic the way this thing works. I wish I'd had it with our first I baby. Because honestly, the white noise, our baby sleep shush, settled my second child to sleep more than I had to. Yeah. So it was magic. Yeah. Um, and it's then like if all hands off settling tool. Oh, it's just actually magic. Mm -hmm. Then after that, if your baby isn't I would always with even with my newborn babies just to in, instill good sleep habit, habits, I would start off with that, put them into bed, put on the white noise. If they went to sleep, great, amazing. If they didn't, then I would start side patting and bum tapping them to make sure that they would go to sleep and make sure that they didn't get overtired because mm. sleep is essentially a skill that they need to learn how to do. So in those first few weeks, if you're having to actively put them to sleep, that's totally fine. And we generally say like, you know, certainly when they're a young newborn, it doesn't really matter how you're putting your baby to sleep. The more important part is that they are going to sleep. Because yep. the younger they are, the more critical overtiredness becomes. And then it's really hard to get them to sleep. However, sort of closer to that 12-week, three-month mark, you do want to start having a look at the way your baby is being settled to sleep. Because there's some really crazy sleep stuff that's looming in the future. And um, around the four-month mark that you want to be prepared for. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty catastrophic. So. That's when you want to be starting to have a look at really encouraging your baby to be swaddled, dark room, white noise, and go into their, their bed and start trying to fall asleep there by themselves with a little bit of help from you if they need it, but just sort of give them a chance to see what they're capable of first. And hopefully if their awake times are right, they, their nap times have been spot on, then, you know, in theory, everything is set up for absolute sleep success. So they should be pretty easy to get to sleep. Yeah, and this is where you can, if you've tried to get them to sleep and rocking and patting and white noise and dark room and things isn't working, this is a great place to actually add in a pacifier or yes. a dummy for newborns mm -hmm. um, at this point to get them just to drift off to sleep, especially if they are overtired. It's a great way of just using that sucking reflex to sort of pop them off to sleep. I wouldn't recommend probably using it all the time. Mm -hmm. I you would use it as a sort of an addition, an additional help if required. Yeah, because again, once you reach that four month mark, for a couple of months that could be a bit of a nightmare. But certainly for newborn, it's a really valuable tool, yeah. extra tool. So then, what if we're doing all this, Amanda, and your baby is still not? sleeping well or settling well because you know we hear people tell us this all the time yeah so I think the first thing that we would look at is um well for us probably the first thing that we would look at is actually the awake times the awake mm -hmm. windows their nap structure all of those things if I think in babies, it's so hard to sort of figure out anything, but the things that you can control, their naps. So if you can control their naps, everything else sort of will fall into place. And if it doesn't, there's an obvious issue there. So 
have a look at our app. We've got it all outlined right through every couple of weeks in that newborn period. The nap structure changes slightly and that mm-hmm. is just the optimal level for of how much sleep and awake time each baby needs at that age. So if we've ruled out that it's not that their sleep is causing the problem, the next thing would be uh, hunger. Mm-hmm. So are they feeding efficiently? Uh, is there a lip tie or a tongue tie? Yes. Or is there some, is there not enough milk coming from the mother or is Are there, they, is the teat on the, if you're bottle feeding, is the teat too fast or too slow too now? Slow. Mm. Yeah. Also, the caveat also, to that is that a uh, extra, extra, yes. extra hungry baby will, will sleep. sleep. Yeah. Which is very sleep. worrying. So, you know, hunger is, especially in these first few months is a really big one. Um, but also wind, you know, like we said before, you cannot underestimate how much trapped wind, If you even if you think they're well winded, you pop them down for sleep, they go to sleep and they wake 15 minutes later, that's because they have trapped wind. And I guarantee you that you'll pick them up and a burp will come up straight away. Or if they're grunting and yeah. squirming in their swaddle, or if their knees, if you pick them up and their legs aren't actually nice and floppy and their le- knees are coming up to their chest or their tummy, um, that's another big obvious sign that there is trapped wind. Trapped wind is a really annoying yeah. and painful thing to Super try and get rid annoying. of. But, Super um, annoying. Yeah. So let's let's have a look at the nights then, because you know, we've talked quite a lot about the days, and that's obviously because we know how how much the days can massively influence the nights in a baby of any age but realistically with a newborn is when your night sleep is possibly going to be is going to take the biggest hit and that's actually what we have to expect you will have to get up to your newborn baby during the night that's a total given but presuming your baby is a healthy weight and they were full term and they're feeding really well they shouldn't be waking as frequently as every 2 hours overnight um, no, we would generally expect sort of two to three night feeds and very small babies, and you should see that start to decrease as they get older because they're able to feed more efficiently during the day and they're starting to consolidate their sleep a lot more at night. And we generally see that certainly by 12 weeks, a lot of babies, if all those other factors are lined up right that we've been talking about, are able to sleep through the night, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe with a dream feed at about 10 o'clock without needing extra feeds in in the night. So if your baby is waking very, very frequently overnight, I would, I would be, first of all, having a look at all these other, these other things I've been talking about, the day sleep, the awake times, and I'll be taking a look at their sleep environment and things like that because we definitely, you know, at, at this stage, they're not waking to be naughty. They're not waking out of habit no. at this age. They're not waking due to a settling issue until they're a little bit older. But Pretty they might much. be waking because they need some awake time. Yeah, that's um, right. Or they were the, overtired at bedtime or, yeah. you know, that, like we said, they've had had too much daytime sleep and, and they're going, hang on, I need some yeah. awake time here, guys, like Amanda just said. So also when you're getting up to your baby at night, you can certainly make it easier on them and on yourself by keeping everything dark. (laughs) Don't get up. I feel like when I had my eldest, there was a thing about like, I remember reading people. Taking them out to the lounge lounge? room and the mum's watching some TV shows while she's feeding the baby in the night. And I'm going, cool. So you're turning on these blue lights, which is like the worst light to interfere with your baby's sleep. And you're wondering why it's taking another two hours to settle your baby back to sleep after that. Like, let, stay in the dark. You know, I used yeah. to use just the the light from my phone screen or my phone torch or put a light on in the hallway and, and sort of mostly close the bedroom door so that there's a tiny little bit of light if you need it. Yeah, Don't turn the lights sure. on. Don't have a, a full meaningful conversation with your baby at 3 a.m. because that's going to wake <laughs> them up and stimulate them and they're – going to really and think it's daytime and think it's time to be awake and partying and not also also it's going to it's going to also wake up your own brain yeah um, and make it worse for you to try and go back to Mm -hmm. sleep you might go back to sleep because you're just so tired and exhausted quickly but honestly if you try and do all of these things in the dark without any noise like other than white noise 
you'll probably go to sleep much, much quicker yourself mm-hmm. as well once you've fed the baby. Yeah, so, so keep everything what, dark and warm yeah. and cozy and feed them, wind them, settle them back to sleep, stay in the area where their bed is, so whether that's your room or their own room, like have a chair right there. Don't go into a different room because there'll be a temperature change. All of these things can make it way easier for your baby because I know this is something people struggle with and I massively struggled with this with my eldest was feeding her in the night and then her not going straight back to sleep straight away. You know, you want them to literally feed wind go straight back to sleep so make it as easy as you can on yourself for that to happen okay so we've talked I think pretty much about everything we possibly (laughs) can to do with the newborn sleep and feeding and all the things so let's just have a quick wrap up I think the first thing that we all need to focus on is those awake times and the overall sleep allocation Mm -hmm. making sure that the daytime sleep is going to be sort of Helping your nighttime sleep because I can guarantee that everything that happens during the day will affect the night, but the daytime, it's much easier to deal with. At nighttime, it's another whole beast. When you Mm -hmm. are tired, you need to sleep. Everybody in the house needs to sleep. It's not nice. So let's focus on those daytime awake windows, the total sleep, and everything will be much easier. Mm -hmm. Um. Making sure that the baby's sleep environment is conducive to sleep, having that dark room, having that white noise. Honestly, baby sleep is just magic. These are the things (laughs) we call quick wins, right? Like you can set up that sleep environment today. Like that's something that if you do this stuff, it will immediately improve your baby's sleep. Like there's just no question about it. For sure. And I think for everybody, whether you're a first time mum or a third time mum, it's a tricky and confusing period. You're Mm -hmm. going to be learning so much about the baby. There's so many unknowns because they can't talk and can't communicate. Um, So having the knowledge means that you're better able to set up great sleep habits that will teach your baby the skill of being able to sleep Mm -hmm. well for so many years to come. Yeah. And if you're confused on what awake windows or how long your baby should be napping for or when they should be sort of expected to wake at certain times overnight and things like that, then we have all of this written down and turned into (laughs) mapped out (laughs) And turned into a beautiful app for you. You can find it on all of our all of the app stores or on our website if you check us out on www.littleones.co. Yeah, and we would absolutely love to help you there because, as we said, it, this stuff changes so 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 rapidly in the first three months, and it actually can be really hard to try and do the math and figure it out and keep up. Yeah. So. So let us do all that work for you. So thank you so much for listening to us and joining us in our podcast today. We have a lot of other podcasts on our channel, which cover every single topic you can ever think of. Mm -hmm. And we release a new one weekly. If you'd like to follow us on our social channels, we would love that as well. We are on everything. (laughs) We are everywhere. And we hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you very much. And we'll see you later. Bye.